Most of today's modern car alarm remote controls and keyless entry remotes for that matter all work on what's called code learning, which is kind of like how you program your TV remote at home. You turn on your television, you grab your universe remote, program the code, or enter the predetermined code and keep hitting the button until it learns to the receiver, which is the television, and you start using your TV remote. Simple enough. That's pretty much how it works these days, but however, what happens when you have an older system which utilizes binary remote codes and frequencies? How do you know what you have and how to fix it once you've figured out that you actually do have that? Here in my hand, I have an older Viper alarm remote, which we all know how I feel about this horrible company, but they will, they'll do for my, um, t my tutorial here. Inside here is the actual alarm brain. I don't know if many of you have actually ever seen one of these or cared to see. But really all it is is just a treated circuit board with a bunch of relays and transistors and little resistors and things like that. Now, on one side you can see all the top, tech, top post technology, which is all laid out there. On the back, there's something going on back here that you're going to want to see, which is pertinent to the older style remote controls. And this is something you will not notice on more modern style remote controls. These are all these little dots. You can see that DEI uses these things called groups. You can see that there's group 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and there's four, four sets of scribes. And the way these things work is that someone at the factory took something like a Dremel and cut these little notches out. So that way that code is made for this particular alarm system. So how it works is if you have a remote program to this system, like they do with most systems, they come with two remotes, you would have a mating remote control and it would also have the scribes cut out to match the remote and this code is the same code so every time you hit your transmitter it sends the same exact frequency same exact code to this alarm every single time unlike the new systems where every time you hit the button it transmits one out of like 68 billion codes or god knows however many billions of codes so it'll the chances are that the alarm will never even see the same code two times and that's an anti-theft system to keep the bad guys from learning and cloning your remotes. That's the way it's supposed to work. Now on these older systems, that, that is a drawback because that technology is antiquated. However, if you want to fix your alarm system, you don't want to just go out and buy a whole new alarm and get it ripped out, rewired, and put in. Just to do something simple like adding a remote control. First thing you need to do is if you already have a remote such as this one and you can see that there's already scratch marks made out, say for instance that you have this guy here, which is an Excalibur, this is an old, uh, uh, let's see what this is. On the bottom of the remote, it has an FCC number, and this one here says H5LAL789D. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Even on this remote control, as old as, as it is, the number of buttons, the position on the, on the remote where they're located, all this stuff matters because they have one which is the same FCC where the numbers are located and the buttons are higher up on the transmitter and what you see inside the, the remote even though the numbers match are totally different once you get inside and try to you know use the same remote to program it to this other remote so they're within their own series they have little separate you know d discrepancies so be careful with, with that kind of thing and that's why I'm taking my time to give you at least an overview I don't know if this is going to be a thorough education but it's going to be definitely enlightening for anybody who's, who needs to fix one of these types of remote controls. So first things first, don't take it for granted that it looks close enough or I, I, I used to have it and I lost a remote and it looks kind of like this because all that kind of, that kind of thinking is just not the kind of thinking you want to do because you want to be dead on, you want to be accurate, and you want to make sure you have the right thing the first time, okay? So moral of the story is that if you have a remote control like this and you're going to buy one say from a guy like me say on my ebay store and you're going to find that these already have cuts you can see three five six are cut um down here 12 11 and 10 are cut you can see nine is uncut eight and seven is uncut now how i know that that's uncut is like is because if i can focus this in it's very difficult to see but this line right here is common and these connect to these numbers so if there was a cut made as you can see that means that you know it's only going to transmit the sum of the frequencies from these numbers that are uncut so these numbers have to match this one here so if you have um, an existing remote and let's just say for instance that you have 1 through 12 and on yours all the even numbers are, are cut open so yours is like 2 4 6 8 
10 and 12 are cut and all the odd numbers are uncut and you bought a used remote control and the numbers don't match up they're different say on the other one all the evens are cut and there's two odd numbers which are also cut that means that you would have to actually go to yours take off some of this here green circuit board treatment crap and take some solder and close up those two numbers so that way all the cuts on the new board that you that you purchase has to match identically to the one that you are trying to repair and replace that has to that has to be exact and after you're done I would definitely suggest that you take like a multimeter set it to continuity and test from here to here make sure it buzzes out and all the numbers are closed like they should and the ones that are open should also be open as well and once you do that take your take your system put it all back together make sure everything is plugged in powered on access etc and test your remote control and it should work great after that the only thing you have to do is over here this little potentiometer and this is optional if your range thinks which it probably does because it's an older system and they've come a long way as well adjust that very slightly you can do that with the potentiometer and when i say that do it with very baby steps i'm talking really small steps and typically you're going to want to turn it clockwise from my experience to get a little bit more of the better range or if you don't want to mess with it and you're too scared to deal with it that's okay too don't have to do it if you don't want to do it but that's really the moral of the story with these older systems these numbers these scribes they have to match it identically so not only does the remote have to look the same the numbers have to be cut out exactly the same this you only have to get involved if it's really becoming a pain in the neck and you just don't have a remote control that you need to match up a lot of times you can get all the information you need right here say for instance this one here is a viper it's the model 500 you can usually google it and there's guys like me that have a lot of resources on their website or you can go to the manufacturer call the manufacturer and they will tell you the fcc on a remote once you get that then you can take up my information and how to information on my tutorial to take you to the next level program the remote control and get it up and working and then have yourself a, a working system once again or add an additional remote control if that's whatever it is that you're trying to do and that's it people that's that's how you uh, work on these are a little bit more challenging than newer stuff but then again this is how things are but now you know